You normally focus more on Democratic campaigns. You guys uh, actually help some Democrats with their campaigns. But here you're focusing on a Republican, President Trump. What did you find in this research? Yeah, I mean, our actual apparatus helps Democratic campaigns. But when we research, we want to research all campaigns and understand what's going on. And what we found in looking at the Facebook and Google ad archives is that Trump's digital operation is just much more sophisticated and much more integrated than any Democrat other than, than Michael Bloomberg. And his operation has really just ramped up in the last few months. So we found that, as you said, he's actually run 58,000 more variations of ads, which is sort of a proxy for how committed you are to A-B testing, message testing, and um, hence your sort of digital sophistication. And he is just steamrolling all Democrats other than Bloomberg on that. Well, I was just going to ask, what is the real benefit of, of being able to test all of these different messages? I mean, I know how Facebook's targeted ad business works. You, you really can tailor a message to a specific group. Is it just that, or is there something else that, that's really an advantage here by having that volume of ads? Yeah, it's not just about targeting. It's actually about learning and understanding what works and what doesn't uh, and being able to use that not only in your ads but feed it into other parts of your campaign and operation whether that's events or mail or TV or slogans or when you're door knocking and that is actually one of the things that he benefits from he we actually looked at what candidates are asking for in their ads um, Bernie and Pete are asking for money pretty much 60% of the time. Trump asks for money only about 25% of the time. The rest of the time, he's collecting information from voters on who they are and what they like, and he's using it to take the conversation off of Facebook, off of Google, and have a different kind of conversation where he knows a lot more about them. Maybe he'll ask for money later on, but he's really has a sophisticated voter data collection operation going on. And because his digital is more sophisticated, it makes his whole campaign better. Rebecca, I want to bring you in here. I mean, it feels like as the incumbent, President Trump sort of gets to play on a different field than a lot of the Democrats when it comes to his digital campaign. How do you think the fact that he is now seeking re-election versus kind of competing with a bunch of others in a primary, how does that change the game for him? Well, there are at least a couple of ways that, that this makes a difference when you compare his campaign to the Democrats. I mean, first of all, he's been building a digital campaign and relationships with the various platforms for digital advertising um, since 2015. So he simply has the long-term advantage um, of having learned how this space actually works. Um, the, the Democratic challengers are also in the middle um, of, of a, a much bigger um, fight amongst themselves at the moment, right? A battle to try and figure out who's going to um, gain the actual resources. Um, and so they have to really be focused on fundraising much more than the Trump campaign does. Um, and that constitutes another major, major advantage for, for the Trump campaign. You know, when I think about uh, some of the ads that President Trump has ran, I, I can't help but uh, remember that ad uh, attacking Joe Biden a few months ago that some said was factually inaccurate. Um, do you feel that he's really pushing the envelope here in terms of what is allowed on these platforms? Uh, is he doing that more than others, or is this just kind of the state of play for politics these days? I think we're seeing that this is moving much more towards the normal, towards the state of play. Um, but in many ways, the Trump campaign was first mover in this area. Um, the Trump campaign has shown a willingness uh, fairly early on to push boundaries, to, um, to break norms um, that, were, that were built over decades in traditional campaign practices on television and radio and so on. The digital space really is relatively new overall, even though, right, we've been talking about this since 2008, certainly. Um, still, candidates are figuring out what works in this space, and they've based their assumptions broadly on what they knew from decades past. But the Trump campaign, as early as 2015, showed its willingness to push these boundaries, to break norms. And so now we're starting to see other candidates follow suit, a real willingness to push these boundaries as well. But, but Trump has certainly been first actor in this area. Yeah, Jessica, my colleague Josh Brustein wrote about uh, some of this data yesterday. 
uh, or actually this morning, I should say, and part of what came out uh, was that you know Mike Bloomberg and President Trump are both kind of advertising in the way that uh, often you would see from a big company, not necessarily a politician. Can you talk us through a little bit about how those two in particular are tailoring their messages and, and how it might be different from other candidates? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence that Bloomberg and Trump both come from the commercial world and they're the two doing it differently. And Rebecca's right about the less pressure on Trump to fundraise than the Democratic candidates. But that's only part of the explanation. There is a, a problem in the Democratic Party with using digital for anything other than an ATM. And uh, Trump and Bloomberg are sort of unencumbered by the this is how we do it in politics uh, viewpoint. And so they've actually taken on the way that the tactics used in the commercial world. So nothing Trump nor Bloomberg is doing are crazy or something that the commercial world isn't using. It's just that it's being skewed by most uh, non-Trump, non-Bloomberg campaigns. And the other thing I would add is that there's nothing um, happening down ballot that is more sophisticated than the presidential campaigns typically. So 2020 is not just a presidential year. Of course, that is incredibly important. But um, on the line in 2020 is the Senate is redistricting, which state legislatures will decide. And we have to be able to uh, ring the alarm bell and say, we got to change something if we want to win.